how did you get started with music and how did you develop your sound? So you, how did we get started with that's music? That's it. I, I, you gotta ask Ryan, man. Um, that's Ryan. Well, me and Jason have been playing together since we were kids. Playing man. together, yeah. We were yeah. 12 and 13 when we met. So yeah. we've been playing on and off since then and kind of learned our instruments together. Which, <laughs> and then went from there. It was yeah. awesome. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're all lifelong musicians now. So uh, I think it started off like anything else. We just had our favorite bands that we listened to and tried to learn how to play like them. And the the fact that we have a line on a lot of those bands is awesome. But then we also have a lot of bands that each one of us likes that influences the entire sound together. And it's just this eclectic mash of of sound that we try to bring together. And it's, it it's somewhat works, you know. Yeah, the origin story goes back a long way. Who told the name never came at start and is there any meaning behind it? <laughs> uh, never can hazard, um, I did think of that. I put it on a list <laughs> of like possible like song names or band names that um, we were trying to figure out. We was watching The Matrix. No, we were trying to figure out the name of the band. I revisited that list and I was like, oh, that, that one's pretty good. You know, there's a couple on the others on there. We actually tried one on for a minute and just didn't work. But Stick. Never can hazard, um, is a play on Nebuchadnezzar, the uh, Assyrian king from antiqu antiquity. Not a nice fellow. Um, but, yeah, no, Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> is a made-up word, so, you know, you put your own meaning to it, and that's kind of... So it's wordplay. Yeah, it's what wordplay. Yeah, it's what, it, it's what it do. What do you want people to take away from your music? I mean, what they take from it. I don't, I don't know. I, it's such an... You don't have to ask him, because Ryan writes the lyrics, so I don't... I don't I mean, I can't, I can't like speak to that. I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> I don't. Like I really, you know, we don't make, we don't make the songs with. Oh, what's your American dreams? The audience in mind. Like, yeah. like, we make the songs that we make, and hopefully somebody can glean something from it, uh, either through our, our passion or. I mean, like songs like uh, like. Um, uh, Genie. Genie, that's like specifically about a thing. It is. And like, I mean, you're know, writing specifically about a topic, like topical. You know, right, there's some topical stuff in there. But <laughs> we're not trying to make a statement. Yeah, a statement you know, or, yeah we're not trying to drill a you know, message into anybody's head. I think it's more like a feel type of a thing, you know. I hope that people come out and listen to us play live, which is kind of our wheelhouse, what we like to do. And it's like a good to get off on mix it, of like things that are semi thematic versus, and then things that are open and interpretive. And I think that's. Never because it's good about having both those things where there's themes, but then there's also room for people to be able to interpret the songs, how they interpret them. So, I mean, I don't, maybe I'm speaking out of line saying that. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> that's, that's the answer right there. Yeah, how would you describe your sound to the average listener? The average listener. The we'll average. See. What's the average listener anymore? I think. Um, we're, uh, well, okay. Heavy so psych rock, I think it's pretty good. My go to oh, is post, like, post hardcore and psych metal. And if you don't know what those are, then, you know, come watch us yeah. figure it out. <laughs> Which I think for most people, we're like, we're not enough of either or. We have just enough of a little bit of everything. So in some ways, we're not <laughs> super, like, definable in one genre. But I feel like, you know, we branch out. So <laughs> there's a little bit of... There's a little bit of there's something little bit of, for everybody. There's a little bit of... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a little bit of something for everyone. If you don't Who are three bands you'd like to talk about it? I'd say... Melvins, <laughs> yeah. You can't say no to the Melvins. I mean, that uh, would be. We, we pair well with them. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with my favorite man, Dillinger, just so that I can hear him again. <laughs> you hear him every night. Dill be awesome. Yeah, Dillinger Escape Plan, yeah. Melvins, and I like a band like. Well, I mean, it might be a little bit noisy for these guys, but I think like we touch on it. Even if these guys are just into a band like the Insane, which I love, and um, Ryan vocally kind of touches on a little bit of that. So I don't know. I'll, I'll throw in a little bit of noise rock just to. Shake it up a little bit. <laughs> How has COVID affected what you do? COVID fucked us up. <laughs> COVID, we were literally we had like we had like we literally had like a lot of momentum, and uh, we were moving in a very. Uh, we all went through some really weird fucking life shit yeah. when COVID happened. And, like we took like a, like six months off. Jason almost lost his thumb. As, <laughs> Don, as Don moved back New Mexico for like six New Mexico months. Yeah. For six months. Yeah, so yeah. We, 
I mean, it was like fucking brick wall stop. I mean, we didn't know. Like, we had, else, such, we had good know. inertia going, and like everything was like popping for us, yeah. and it was just like fucking. We were literally like, we were literally like, we were literally like two days away from playing the Arenal Theater. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, no, you're right. done, dude. So yeah, fuck COVID. So yeah, it did kind of fuck us up a little bit. It did. But if, if we were going to get hurt or move away from the state for a little while or something like well, that, I mean, as long as everything is shut down, I mean, that might have been the time to do it, but it still fucked us up. And, <laughs> and honestly, it, it allowed us to record our album. Yeah. Because we couldn't, we weren't playing live, you know, yeah. it, it really allowed us to fucking... Get, in on that. get the fucking album done. Yeah. So it was a double edged coming sword. back. Yeah, I mean that's what it was. Uh, What's your take on the current state of metal? I mean, like, there's so many versions of metal now that it just it's hard to like focus on one thing to say well, about the just, state of it. It's massive. There's so many bands. Like, there's it's just like you know, there's, there's too many bands, bands but not enough bands. bands. A sea of options. You know, <laughs> we're about to drop in the fucking ocean. So. Yeah. So. What's the current music scene like locally there in Colorado? Yeah. It's cool. I, I, Well, Colorado has a pretty, Colorado has a pretty, uh, you know, I mean, just thinking about the, the bands we're playing with tonight, we played with them last week or so, it's just been fun, you know, it's been good to go and hang out and listen to them play and see how we mesh with them. But at this moment, great. Colorado is definitely like a spot where people are picking yeah. stuff, where it's kind of a hotbed right now, oh, yeah. so, I mean, we get, we get, it, the problem is too much. We're playing a lottery with like a bunch yeah, of, like, there's always competing of shows, bands. like, <laughs> We're always like competing with our we're always competing with our friends. Like we right. can't, you know what I mean? Like we're playing a show and our friends are over at Cinema Circle or over there at they're over at Lions Lair or they're over at you know wherever they're at. So it sucks because I mean it's great because we're all doing the things, but at the same time it's like you're, you're competing with your buddies sometimes. Yeah. And so it's just like, well, it's, it's, good for you guys, good for us. We'll see how it's we're thriving. Thriving, yeah, it's <laughs> thriving. Yes. What's your take on the royalties that streaming services pay to artists? I don't know. That's I mean, what, who answers this in a positive manner besides <laughs> like fucking the top? Five percent artists. I mean, I can't speak world. for Beyonce, but yeah, let's see. <laughs> Still waiting for fucking anything from anywhere. Yeah. Um, and we fucking we held out a long time, but we finally drank the Kool Aid. Just like, let's do on the streaming platforms because you're just hurting yourself somehow. But you're either way, like you're hurting yourself on them. Yes, or you're hurting <laughs> yeah, yourself. you guys want to go off. <laughs> What's next for the Bakken? Let's start. Next, I think, is we need to take it on the road. We can, because I think that's the next obvious step. Not there yet, but uh, we need uh, to more recordings, I guess. And we need know. to get fucking on the road. We need Maybe to another guitar player. Make it around and, and, and to some new cities and get some new eyeballs on us. And, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're slowly working on the next record, so that's spread the love. We'll be out in the next year or two, hopefully. Yeah, playing around with an idea for like a cover EP. Playing with ideas right now, but I think the focus is trying to get out there and uh, do it. Yeah. Any shoot boots? Shout outs, yo!